Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Seema Shah Fairbank and in this video we will learn about the introduction of groundwater hydrology. Upon completing this video, you'll be able to define various terms associated with groundwater. This will include but is not limited to aquifers and wells. In addition, you'll be able to define and calculate essential variables for evaluating groundwater flow. There are many different ways that we can explain groundwater. Some refer to it as groundwater hydrology, others say geohydrology, and still others will say hydrogeology. They can be used interchangeably depending on the audience that you are speaking with. But when it really comes to the definition, groundwater hydrology deals with the distribution and movement of groundwater in the soil and rock of the Earth's crust. And as engineers, we deal with the design of wells to pump the groundwater for human use and also to drain water into the groundwater. From a general perspective, groundwater deals with the water beneath the Earth's crust. As you're looking at this image, think of rain water and surface water as it hits the land surface. Water will infiltrate into the ground. The first layer the water will see is usually the unsaturated layer. This means that there may be some water, but all the pore spaces are not completely filled with water. There's gonna be air. The water in the unsaturated zone will move through the Earth's crust and eventually hit a saturated zone, which is where there is groundwater. In the saturated zone, there is water in each and every spot of the open spaces. The saturated zone is located below the groundwater or water table. The groundwater is hydraulically connected to the surface water as shown in the schematic. If the surface water is higher than the groundwater table, there will be additional infiltration from the lake or stream into the groundwater. If the surface water is lower than the groundwater table, we will see through flow, flow coming from the groundwater into the stream or lake. Next, let's take a cross section of the groundwater and let's break it up. We have our unsaturated zone and our saturated zone broken up by the water table. The unsaturated zone is also referred to as the Vado zone, and the saturated zone is referred to as the phreatic zone. The Vado zone is composed of soil and unsaturated material. It is located above the water table. Pores within the Vado zone may contain water, while the phreatic zone is the saturated zone, and it is below the elevation of the water table where all the pores are saturated. The zone above the water surface is called the capillary zone, and there's a higher water content in this zone due to capillary effects. Remember, the ground is made up of soil, solids, air, and water. This is the soil composition. We can break this up and create a di diagram that separates the air, water, and solids. In a laboratory, we can determine the weight of each of these substances the weight of the air, the water, and of the solids. Remember, the weight of air is zero. Together, this gives us the total weight. The volume can also be determined. The volume of air, the volume of water, and the volume of solids. Remembering that the volume of air and water is also referred to as the volume of voids. The total area is the sum of the volume of voids and the volume of solids. With this information, we can relate volume and weight. The weight of a substance is equal to the volume of that substance times the specific gravity of the substance times the specific weight of water. Note that the specific gravity of water is one and the specific gravity of solid, usually soil in our case, will be 2.65. The void ratio is referred to as E, is the volume of voids divided by the volume of solids. You can also refer to it as the volume of voids is equal to E times the volume of solids. The porosity, rho, is the volume of voids divided by the total volume. You can also say it's equal to the void ratio divided by one plus the void ratio. Or the volume of solids is equal to the total volume divided by one minus the volume of the void ratio. 
Saturation, S, is the volume of water divided by the volume of voids. The specific weight is important. Dry specific weight is the weight of the solid divided by the volume total. We can also write this in the following form. Volume of solid times the specific gravity of the solid times the specific weight of water divided by the volume of the solid times one minus the void ratio. This can be simplified as the specific gravity of the solid times the specific weight of water divided by one minus the void ratio. We can also find the specific weight, the saturated specific weight, as the total weight divided by the total volume. We can further write this as the volume of the solid times the specific weight of water times the specific gravity of the solid plus the volume of water, which is also the volume of the solid times the void ratio, times the specific weight of water, divided by the volume of the solid times one plus the void ratio. This simplifies to the specific weight of the specific weight of water times the specific gravity of the substance solid plus the void ratio, all divided by one plus the void ratio. These different terminologies really help in understanding how water moves. When we understand how much openings there are, how porous our substance is, how much voids there are, how saturated our, our ground will be, will really help us understand as we make water move. Aquifers are an important part. Now that we understand the various terminologies, let's discuss aquifers. Aquifer is an underground layer of water-bearing permeable rock, rock fractures, and unconsolidated material from which groundwater can be extracted. This image will really help us understand different types of aquifers and wells. A confining unit does not allow water to penetrate. The gray area identifies confining units. An aquifer that is bound by two confining units is defined as a confined aquifer. And an aquifer that is only bound on one side is considered an unconfined aquifer. What that means is you will have atmospheric pressure for the unconfined aquifer while the confined aquifer will experience pressure. The other thing you'll notice is there are different types of wells. There are artesian wells and there's water wells. An artesian well that is placed below your water table is going to result in a flowing artesian well, almost like a spring. While an artesian well that's placed above the water table will not result in flowing and will require a pump. A water table well will also require a pump because the water will need to be pumped from the unconfined layer. A perched water table well occurs when you have an unconfined layer with very little water in it. In a confined aquifer, the water table will result being under pressure and is represented by the potentiometric surface. While in an unconfining aquifer, the water table is actually at atmospheric pressure and will follow the natural slope of the underlying material. Thank you and look forward to seeing you in the next video which will discuss Darcy's Law.